Well, I think the number of U.S. forces at the moment is at its peak. I mean, we have reached the peak uh, during the battle to liberate uh, Nainoa and Mosul. And uh, there is, they have started to have a drawdown of forces. Uh, I think the number reached something like 5,200 troops. Uh, and uh, their role at present is uh, training, logistical support, and to provide uh, some uh, air cover in certain areas for our forces. Uh, we are going to conclude this last task to provide the air cover with the liberation of Western Ambar uh, and to secure the Iraq-Syrian border. With that job done, then there will not be any need for the, any air cover in the future. Uh, but the three key areas are logistical support, training, and intelligence cooperation is very important to follow up after the defeat of Daesh militarily. You know, this is a very dangerous uh, terrorist organization. We have to make sure they will not succeed in their terror campaign. I'm sure they are resorting now to terrorist attacks everywhere in the world. We should make sure that they are not successful. We need to exchange uh, intelligence information about their activities. Uh, we have a fear that some of their uh, terrorist fighters, they have moved to other countries and try to prepare for, to, to have a campaign from uh, different locations in the region. And uh, we are very ready and we are really very steadfast in following them up together with our friends in the region. And that is one of the purpose of my regional tour in the region because we know they are spreading, they are going to cause a problem somewhere else. It's not in our interest, it's not in the interest of other countries in the region for terrorists to regroup again. We have experienced uh, a very, uh, we have seen them here in Iraq. We have seen their atrocities. We have seen their capabilities, the damage they can do on the population, on the infrastructure. And we don't want a repeat of this somewhere else. Because at the end of the day, the security of the region is one. Uh, un the unfortunate thing is some countries thought they can separate their security from others and the terrorists will play somewhere else uh, uh, far from them. Now, what happened has proved this is a very vicious and very sophisticated and dangerous organization who has not only threatened the security of the region or Iraq, they are threatening the whole security of the world. So this is, I think, a task. We should work together with our friends in the U.S. and others to complete, to finish off this uh, terror. We can do it. Well, I think we've said it at the beginning, we said it publicly, since uh, this uh, call for referendum in, in the uh, KRG areas, the Kurdistan area, and we told them, look, uh, we are partners in one country, so we are citizens of one country. You cannot just draw a line and you say, I'm going to, to protect it by blood. This is not wrong, right. There is a lot of enmity in, enmity in, the, in, the, in the country. Daesh and the terrorists has created a lot of gap between communities in the countries. And we have to heal these uh, things. We have to mend the relationship between communities. The timing is wrong. It is fundamentally wrong to decide unilaterally from, one, unilaterally from one side that we want to separate and they were going to impose their, old, their border by force. See, uh, I'm not uh, a fan of these borders, to be honest with you. Nobody's a fan of these borders, which has been drawn, uh, I don't know, by Sykes-Pico some, sometime like 100 years ago, which was imposed on, on, on the whole region. Uh, and I remember we always in the school, we taught this is an imperialist plot against these countries. Having said that, there's 100 years passed by, and people's life has been reorganized along these borders. If you are going to change them by force, you are calling for blood. You are calling for a lot of wars in the region. And this can lead to the disintegration of the whole region, of whole countries. Iraq has achieved victory over terrorists. Together we can build the country, we can build the region. So that was a move in the wrong direction. And I'm sad to say the Kurdish leadership have insisted on it. They called upon it. And not only that, they were calling on adding all the, the, the regions around them to this by force. Our demand was from the beginning is let us work together in these areas 
allow the Iraqi federal forces to go to these areas. We are calling on, we were calling on the Peshmerga to cooperate with us, not to fight us, and to work with us on this under a federal command. Uh, the unfortunate thing that Kurdish leadership were calling on the Peshmerga to fight Iraqi army, which they called enemy, and they've attached all atrocities of the past, which is committed by the Saddam regime. And you know the atrocities of Saddam Hussein was not only against the Kurds, against all Iraqis. The sacrifices of Iraqi people under that regime was huge. And uh, uh, that regime as well uh, subjected uh, certain countries as well in, in the region to his atrocities as well. So they have called for something else. We have called for the Bishmarget to cooperate. And apparently, to our uh, happiness, the Bishmarget soldiers of the Bishmarget have followed our call rather than the call of the Kurdish leadership. They didn't fight our army. They just cooperated with our army. So I think we have went into most of these areas without a fight, without any confrontation. There are still elements within the Peshmerga who are following orders. Peshmerga as a national entity, we are very much working with it, cooperating with it. But the way it is at the moment, there are armed groups which follow political parties. There are intelligence services in the KRG, in the Kurdish area, which is following political parties. They've been pushed to confront us. And what happened in one area, which is outside this, what happened in Kirkuk, is quite far. I call it a flashpoint area, which is Tuskhormato. It's always problems there. It happened about a year ago, a year and a half ago, and again a few months ago, because the, the, the Kurdish leadership, they were intent on imposing whatever they think on the people. They have polarized this region. So when our move in Kirkuk started, apparently the Bishmarga collapsed in that area, and people took the law and order into their own hand. So I've sent uh, security forces there. We send our army to take law, to impose law and order. We are successful, but there's an, the unfortunate enmity between the two, which has caused casualties on both sides. By the way, it's not only on the Kurds. In actual fact, there are more casualties on the Turkomans who are living in Tuskhormato than on the Kurds, because the, the forces which has withdrawn has bombarded the area, and that's why there was a retaliation and things like that. Uh, at the moment, uh, we are very eager not to enter into confrontation. We, we, our demand is clear. Disputed area, areas under the Iraqi constitution must be under the control of the federal state. It's very clear. The, the, unfortunately, the people or the leaders in Erbil and other areas, they've decided to move as Iraq was, uh, was busy with fighting Al-Qaeda and other terrorist groups that when the U.S. Army was, was in Iraq the Bishmarga and other elements, they expanded their control. And they made use as well when Daesh rolled into Iraq in the summer of 2014 to go even further to control oil fields, other areas, to control Iraqi army barracks. All we have asked them, asked them at the beginning, let us take back these barracks because our forces are there now. They want to secure the area. And let us, the North Oil Company, which is a, a state-owned company, to take back control of the oil fields to protect them and to make the protection even better. They were refusing all of that. Now we have extended our authority. We are extending the authority to other lines. And I have to say, we've said it very clear. Iraqi oil is the property of the Iraqi people. The export of that oil must be done by the state to the benefit of the people. There is a strategical pipeline, oil pipeline, which runs from Kirkuk to, to, to Al Fatha, which is in Beijing, near Beijing runs to Nainawa, runs to the Turkish, uh, th to the Iraq-Turkish border to Turkey. That was always under the control of the federal state. Uh, the, 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 the Kurdish forces have controlled that pipeline in the north. They don't have the right to do that because this is our, well, exit to Turkey. Iraq must have a border with Turkey. They should not cut Iraq from the, the Turkey. According to the, our constitution, the borders, are, should be run by the federal state. This is the exclusive authority of the Iraqi government, federal government, to do this. And we intend to complete this task. We will stop. I think most of the Kirkuk now has been taken back to federal control. Uh, uh, I'm sad to see that 
some Kurdish elements are pushing to kill our soldiers, and they publicizing it. Officially on our side, we don't feel happy if a Kurd or any citizen is being killed. We didn't claim victory over Kurds or over other citizens. And we are not showing. Yes, in the social media, I think there is enmity. Somebody is working on both sides to inflame the situation. But I'm very saddened that the official uh, media, in Erbil in particular, are trying to show it. It is a victory on Iraqis. When they kill Iraqi soldiers and they attack Iraqi soldiers, they consider that as victory. They are using some arms which is supplied to them. To We have never, my orders and commands are very clear to our security forces, not to confront the fighters of the Peshmerga, never. If you face them, give them a molding. If you can evade them, do that. Never aim your weapons against them, never into a fighting. And we've, we succeeded in that. But I think what happened in Erbil, they've lost, they're trying to impose a confrontation on us. They're trying to kill as much of the Iraqi soldiers to force us to do the same with them. The Kurds are our citizens. My priority is to protect them, to protect the rest of Iraqis. But I'm sending a very powerful message. If you continue to kill Iraqi soldiers, you will be held responsible. These are people who are defending the countries, who are fighting for the sake of the country. They are not fighting Kurds. This is not the army of Saddam Hussein who terrorized Iraqi people. This is a new army who are fighting to protect the people, all people, including Kurds. They should not fight this army. We not allow them. Well, I'm not going to kill Kurds or any other population, and this should stop. Our aim is very clear, to restore Iraqi federal authority according to the Constitution on these areas. Well, uh, I don't want to comment on uh, the legality of Mr. Barazani. This is, uh, you know, I mean, the parliament has been uh, almost been uh, not, not holding uh, meetings for t about two years, just less than two years. And the only time they called uh, the parliament to convene is to call them to support the referendum, which is wrong. And I understand they are now trying to bring the parliament back. Uh, and uh, you can see they have kicked uh, the Speaker of the Parliament. They have kicked members of the Ministerial Council, who belongs to other parties. Uh, and uh, I've told Mr. Barazani at the time, when we had, we still, I hope, uh, we should continue a good relationship with the Kurdish Authority in general. But I've told him at the time, look, this is not the way to run a state. This is not the way to run a region. Uh, I mean, I have political opposition. Everybody have in the democratic world political opposition. You should work with them, even if you don't like them. This is the way forward. My fear was this. Iraq is one country. If you revert to dictatorship in one part, people might copy that in another part of the country. It's very dangerous for us. We have suffered a lot under dictatorship. We should never allow dictatorship to come back. And I think... Uh, uh, we should work together in KRG to restore democratic institutions. This is a must. That is why I insist on restoring democratic institutions, or on, on, uh, on, uh, on restoring auditing of the federal state in terms of spending, in terms of uh, fiscal spending and others. And this is a must. Even my office being, uh, being audited by these auditors, I think we should, this, I mean, this doesn't minimize uh, my position. In actual fact, it makes it, in all, every democratic country, there must be such auditing and such observation by federal institutions, and I insist on this. That is a safeguard for democracy. And what is the other? Uh, Do you see any circumstances under which independence? Well, I, I respect aspirations of the Kurdish people in general. I, in actual fact, I respect the aspiration of any nation. But we're living together in this region. Now, the question is, do you want to redraw the, the, the borders or what? Should that happen unilaterally or together? That is number one. Number two, we are living in the region. Uh, my security, yes, my own security, it is my own affairs. 
But what's about if I make a move in my country which affects the security of our neighbors? Don't I have a right? We, we are living in the same world. If a step I'm taking on my territory which will endanger the national security of the other nation, they can, will consider they have the right to do something about it. So I think there must be an understanding somewhere, together with our neighbors, to take it unilateral, unilaterally. It means you are, you are moving to a step where you'll fight all your neighbors. This is not building bridges. If you want a state or an entity for the Kurds, you have to live with your neighbors. And I can see what the Kurdish leadership has done. They have offended all the people around them, all. I haven't seen anyone around them who accepted their move, including their own Kurds. I know a lot of the Kurds. Some of them probably, they were not to uh, have the courage to speak, but now a lot of them are speaking. They're looking at the, the results and they're speaking up. And uh, I don't know, I cannot control the future. I don't know what's going to happen. But any national leader, it is his job to keep his population together, not to cause a fight or infighting among population. And it is a job to keep the country together. If there is a national agreement for the Kurds to have a state, well, I cannot say no. But there must be a national agreement in the country. If there is agreement between the Arabs, the Turkmans, and the Kurds, yes, we can live together by separating our entities. Well, we have to look at the constitution, and this is up to communities and political parties in all these entities to decide how they should uh, amend the constitutions, this constitution and the way forward. But this is not happening. Uh, by all honesty, I think this inspiration has been pushed back many years now. And that was my warning to them. I said, you have achieved, or we have achieved together, a prosperity for our population and for the Kurds in particular. Your step in the, in the referendum is risking going back many years. Don't do this. If you want your names or to be registered in the history, I'm afraid it will, but in the wrong, in the wrong side of the history. Well, I think we are having good relationship between all, but uh, is, our role is not to go be between. This is not our major role. If we can do it meanwhile, it's fine. If we can uh, amend uh, the relationship between these countries, we'll do it, but it will need one condition, at least, that they both want to do that. If any party of them don't, we, nobody can enforce anything on them. Uh, I think, uh, well, the Iraqi new position, Iraq is getting stronger, getting unified. I think uh, others, or the, the interference of others in the affairs of Iraq will become less and less. As ir this is a new build confidence among Iraqis, the Iraqi national feeling, which our aim is to increase, our people, people attachment to their own countries. Uh, I mean, yes, uh, we want to achieve Iraqi interests, but not on the account of the interests of others. We have, this is, we have to work together. And of course, countries probably, they want to achieve the maximum of the benefit to them through investment and others with Iraq. We welcome it. But at the end of the day, we want to have a relationship with all of them. Uh, and we have been criticized before by Saudi Arabia and other Gulf states that Iraq is m more tilted towards Iran because Iran was very welcoming to the new regime in their countries and they were forthcoming. Now, if the Gulf want to do the same, Saudi Arabia and others will very much welcome it. I mean, this is in the interest of Iraq. Iraq is in dire need of investment and other businesses. We have a huge desert in the western of the country. If I can transfer that desert to a green land, which will create thousands and thousands of jobs, which will remove this uh, sandstorms, not only in Iraq, in the region, and which will make uh, Iraq and the region a better place to live in, I would do this, even if some people don't like it. 
And I think there is a room for everyone here. This, uh, uh, some have considered this is a bold step by, by the Prime Minister of Iraq, especially uh, after my first visit. But I can see this, uh, my, my role is to remove the enmity between people. There has been a lot of enmities between both. There has been something like sometime sectarian uh, campaign to separate us. Uh, we want to end that. And by working with the leaders in Saudi Arabia and the, and the Gulf states, I think we are moving closer to more cooperation. They have their own difficulties. We have our own difficulties here. I know some in Saudi Arabia don't like, that, like this. We see a lot of articles in the past being written against us, try to sabotage the whole thing. We have some here on our side where they don't want us to see us successful. They don't want to, uh, a warmer relationship. But we are moving, I would say, um, carefully, but steady fast. That is our position at the moment. That's our plan. We should solidify our position. We should deliver at the end of the day. We should show people the benefit of this cooperation by creating jobs, by creating better investment, uh, like uh, development, uh, to uh, push the economy forward, uh, to reduce the slowdown in the economy because lower oil prices. I have to find other means of financing the country. Iraq cannot rely, unfortunate thing, the Iraq in the for, for last 50 years has been relying on oil as uh, the main source which constitutes something like 90% of our income. This is wrong. The oil is not going to stay there forever. So we have to build a parallel economy which rely on something else. The only way we can build it by cooperating with other countries. And we are open for this. I mean, my discussion in Egypt, in Jordan, is along the same line. We can build this pipeline of gas, we have, can, can have a, a common grid for electricity. We have to build a like, strong relationship with our nations rather than with just governments. If it is just governments, uh, the unfortunate thing is leaders disagree sometimes for personal reasons. And this can sabotage the whole relationship. But if it is strengthened by having uh, a, a level of cooperation which uh, touches the interests of the people, in both countries, like business people, other people, then it will be very difficult to sabotage the relationship by just one leader or just one misunderstanding. Well, let me state first that uh, there is, uh, like, uh, I don't know, enmity, misunderstanding, or more than misunderstanding between the United States and Iran since 1979 revolution. It's not new. This is not our own creation. This is something which happened. Um, but what we are telling everyone, including uh, our Iranian neighbors and our, uh, the US, who become our friends by supporting us in our fight against Daesh, that we welcome your support. We would like to work with you, both of you, but please don't bring your trouble inside Iraq. You can sort it anywhere else, although we very much would like to, that you reach agreement between you two, but don't bring your quarrel inside Iraq. Iraq, Iraqi people have suffered so long under Saddam Hussein, they have suffered so long under terrorism, and then under Daesh. We should not pay the price of misunderstanding somewhere else. And I'm calling on our, all our political groups here, please, it's is, is, uh, is up to you to carry certain ideas to support this or that. But don't involve the whole of Iraq in this. This is your views, you should not impose it. We should not pay a price for a quarrel or misunderstanding which it does happen between countries. I don't expect when I have misunderstanding with a certain country to drag with me other countries in that confrontation because countries have their own interests and sometimes they don't want to go through that. But to impose something on us, this is very unacceptable. And uh, the, the point is, I have to say very clearly, the international coalition, where, which is led by the US, they are here in Iraq by the invitation of the Iraqi government. And that invitation by the Iraqi government, specifically to the US uh, side, was sent by the Iraqi government on 24th 
of June 2014. That is the government before me. Uh, because there was an onslaught by Daesh on the country. There was a danger. They are attacking Baghdad and the thing. So there was a request by the Iraqi government on the American side to support them. And that's when the U.S. started to send planes and others here to try to check the movement of Daesh. And therefore, after I, I took office, we have developed that into an international coalition with other countries. So others came in, like Australia, France, Italy, Britain, Germany, and many other countries. I think there are something like uh, 12 active members who are really taking part, and 21 other members, and about 61 coalition partners uh, as, a, as a total. These are here by Iraqi government invitation. Any attack on them is attack on Iraq, the sovereignty of Iraq the sovereignty of the state. It's the same like any attack on an embassy in a country, even if you don't like the country of that embassy, is an attack on the state, we consider the same. This is an attack on Iraq, on Iraqi people, on the Iraqi government, which we are, don't tolerate it. If, if politicians in parliament want to reach an agreement to say, yes, we don't like this country, we don't want the troops from that country, well, they can go to parliament and do that. But to do it unilaterally by a threat, this is unacceptable, and we're telling everyone this is unacceptable. The, uh, regarding the Public Mobilization Force, which is the PMF, this is now an Iraqi institution. After the legislation in Parliament, it comes under the command of the Commander-in-Chief, who, who is the Prime Minister. And we intend to enforce this. We have started the process of enforcing it. If you compare the behavior of the PMF before the law, and after the law. If you look at the Battle of Nainawa, I don't think I have received ever a complaint about the PMF. I've received some complaints about some elements who are temporary PMF, we are, which we call them. They are local. They were helping Iraq security forces, the locals. Some, they've been not trained properly. They've probably not been screened properly. And there was some excesses in their behavior, mainly vendetta, because when you well, I've, I've opened many investigations in this, and you find a guy who lost his, the whole of his families, many members of his brothers or things, by some elements who are still there. So they took the law into their own hands, and we tried to enforce law and order again. Uh, so the PMF is moving very fast to be under the control of the Iraqi institution, the Commander-in-Chief. We have two problems which we have to sort out. A. When Daesh moved into Iraq, many people, they moved to protect the country, to defend the country. And there was uh, uh, this, uh, I mean, uh, well, uh, many politicians as well done the same. Many Iraqi government officials done the same. So there was like a mix. It, it was like a national uh, uh, task to defend the country. And the line between military and political has minimized. It becomes like the dream or the, the, the aim of the whole country to defend the territory. And that's where now we, are find, we have to separate the two. If the PMF is a military and security apparatus under the Iraqi commander-in-chief, then we should separate it from politics. Otherwise, if you allow political groups to continue with the PMF, there is a danger they will be in fighting in the election or in, in the control or winning the people over. Uh, I think this is a very sad date for democracy, which will cause us to go back to dictatorship. Uh, this is important for us. It's vitally important, and I issued few, taking few steps to separate politicians from the PMF. The PMF must become a professional force under the command of the Iraqi government should be only loyal to Iraq, not to anyone else. Only to, sorry, not, not only Iraq, only to Iraqi official institutions, who is the commander in chief in the country, uh, rather than political parties or other, any other force outside or inside Iraq. Uh, number two, there are elements who are, have some, some probably heading, whether they are political parties, maybe militias before. They, they consider themselves as fighters who fought the US 
army the way they were in Iraq. And some of them are inside the PMF, some of them are outside the PMF. I have to be, again, very clear on this. The side which is inside the PMF has to abide by the rules of the PMF. Their loyalty must be for the country, not any political parties or any affiliation. The part which is outside, they should not carry arms. This becomes unlawful under the Iraqi constitution. We are moving very quick on this, and we're telling everyone we are moving. I don't want confrontation. We have enough of the wars. We are doing it politically. We are exerting enough pressure on them by producing a, a unity among Iraqi political parties and others in parliament and among the country. We don't want confrontation. We want understanding. We agree to run this country peacefully according to democratic rules. If this is the case, and we agree on this, nobody should carry arms outside the Iraqi security forces, which is allowed by the Constitution, allowed by the authority. So under these two conditions we are moving now, there is a positive change, which I very much support. Uh, the last thing I want is to have a confrontation with the political parties on this. We don't want that. This will not be to, for the benefit of the country. I want to create unity on this. There must be unity, even among these groups. They must accept this. This is a demand by the country. They should respect it. And I welcome them to be part of it as well. Well, it's, uh, I mean, you know, elections uh, were held in 2005, 2006 under much more severe conditions than this. I mean, many parts of the country were controlled by terrorists at the time, although the U.S. Army was here. But still, I mean, elections were held. So uh, we, are, we want to hold the election on time, according to the Constitution timing. And even in 2014, elections were held while many parts of the country was not under the control of the Iraqi government. Fallujah was lost, Ramadi was lost, a huge part of al -Ambar were lost, part of Mosul were not under control, disputed area was not under the control of the Iraqi government, federal government, and then, but elections been held in 2014. So I think now we are in a much better place than before. Uh, I mean, disputed areas are under control of the Iraqi federal state, Ramadi and Fallujah under the control of Iraqi. Most, I mean, now, with probably in the next, uh, before the end of this year, we'll have all the country under the control of Iraqi uh, government, and elections can be held. We are now placing a very uh, dedicated program for displaced people to go back to their homes. Like in Al Ambar, I think uh, we have almost zero people who are outside the thing. We are only have 4,100 people in the camps for Al Ambar. And mostly, this is not because they are prevented from going home, but they have their own reasons not to go home. Either they have rented their home and they are living freely in these camps, which is really wrong. That's why I'm calling on these uh, agencies to look after the refugees. Please redirect our efforts to help people go back to their homes rather than encourage them to stay. This is now our, our work. I've given, now a given a timetable in Nainawa for people to go back to their villages. Uh, we are discussing few issues like water, drinking water, because unfortunately these are wide scattered villages. They never had drinking water. In the past, I think they have uh, like water wells or something, which is uh, as, as people develop further, people don't want to drink it anymore. So I think there are water t tanks which must go around. So we are restoring, it's always been there, even under, uh, I mean, 20 years ago. So we are restoring that system very quickly for people to go back. We are putting a timetable for every area to go back, as we've done for the Lambar very successfully. And the same in Salahuddin, there are areas where people couldn't go back because it was still under threat. Although it's under our control, but still Daesh was on the mountain near them, or they, they are hitting with terrorist attacks. Now with this security, and we secure this area, it is time for people to go back. And we intend to bring all displaced people to these areas before the elections. I think the system of the election, as I understand it, is ready there, most of it. People have registered and will open the door again for new registration, especially with the returnee. 
uh, and I'm very much encouraged the uh, election uh, commission which has been voted in parliament yesterday. I hope they will be truly independent, truly independent. I'm going to encourage them uh, uh, regardless of, of how they've been elected, how they've been chosen. They must act like individuals and like a group, independent group, to protect the, the elections from uh, being uh, derailed uh, uh, and to have very a democratic thing. We have introduced, I think, despite our financial problems, uh, I have dedicated uh, uh, the, the, the spending for the election commission till now to have an electronic system which will uh, remove most of the dispute which happened in the past. We want a very clear election. The results must be very quick uh, through electronic means and to reduce any corruption or uh, any any uh, thing, uh, 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 fiddle with the, with the votes. This is a big question. Is a big question. Arab Spring is supposed to be a democratic movement. Ended up to have a spring for Israel and the chaos in the Arab region. Well, I think uh, what we are doing here, somebody is at work to try to send the wrong message to the region that democracy is bad for them, to protect their own rules. I think this is very bad, very bad. I think we have to work together to give uh, more say for the people. Is, uh, I know democracy is under threat, not only in Iraq, everywhere else. There's a problem. There's a problem with popularism. I'm not against popularism, but it's been used to increase uh, or do, to, to introduce mistrust between people and politicians. There is something wrong which we have to address. And elections must get people nearer to the state or people to see the state as representing them. But I see ev everywhere it's causing a lot of hatred lot of hatred I think this is I mean this may sound f philosophical but uh, I'm very alarmed very alarmed by this especially for witnessing what terrorism can do what differences can do I can see polarization everywhere I can see it in the American uh, people I can see it in Europe there is a huge polarization dangerous that it carries the seeds of uh, democracy not being representing the people. Uh, and it needs a solution. This is here, here in the area. You see, the point in the area, in, in, in the region, sorry, in the region, something like monarchy, I mean, uh, I don't have a problem with monarchy, but it can be constitutional monarchy. I mean, UK has a monarchy, but it's not a dictatorship. There are other countries who have monarchy. They're not dictatorship. So I think you can mix the two. It, you don't have to change drastically your system, but at least you can give more share to the people. This is a must. If democracy means only election, this is not a solution. The essence, you have to have democratic political parties. How you can implement democracy when your parties are run by dictators? Can you? You cannot. So the whole thing must be transformed. All our institutions must be transformed. It must be open to the people. You have to share other people with, with, with the, your decision making and others. That's what we are trying to achieve here. And I hope others in the region will see a lot of hope and positive tendencies in our democracy. We have decided that we'll accept we are different. Others, they want to paint their society as one. We say, no, we are not one. We are different. But let us make use of these differences among us. We are different. Well, this can produce a lot of good things if you are different. If you have different culture than me, I can learn from you, you can learn from me. If you have different language than me, we can learn from each other. I think this is a positive move. Um, that's why we're very eager to to keep and protect our diversity. This is essential. We want to undo whatever the terrorists have done. 
they want to wage a differences and a fight between our communities, uh, between like Christians and, and Muslims, between Shia and Sunni, between Azidis and non-Azidis, between Kurds and Arabs. We have victory over the terrorists, but the actual victory is to remove whatever, to undo whatever they have done by working together, by being homogeneous, even if we are different. Uh, I'm very proud that uh, Iraqi society is di diversified by, by different people. This is our power, this is our heritage. Uh, this is what we are. We should protect it and keep it. And I hope others in the region will see this. It is not a shame for their country if you are different. It's a shame if you try to oppress the other side who are in a minority to behave like the majority. That's not right. Well, is, is, uh, uh, yes, we are encouraging this very much. We are calling, no, I mean, this is uh, the, the Saudi and Iraqi, this uh, body which we have created is to do exactly this. The United Arab Emirates is very eager, Kuwait is very eager to get into this. Of course, the US, I've seen a lot of interest when I visited the US from US companies to be in Iraq, to invest in Iraq. And the same when I visit France is the same thing and Germany as well. So this is very encouraging. Uh, we, have, uh, we have some red tape and uh, bureaucracy, I agree. Uh, you see, I think the Ottoman Empire was very bureaucratic. And we had then uh, the British, they came, and they were well known by their bureaucracy as well. <laughs> and then the Ba'ath regime. So I think we have lived for probably a century now uh, under, under a lot of uh, bureaucracy, uh, which we're trying to remove it. I think uh, we are uh, we're having some steering programs to remove this bureaucracy in certain areas. That's why I established now this higher committee for investment, which is headed by the Prime Minister to encourage investment, to remove all these obstacles. This is a must. Otherwise, our economy is unsustainable. We have to encourage this. We have to build this uh, uh, like mesh of interest with other nations. Uh, that I encourage the US, other, uh, our region, uh, Europeans, to even Japanese and Chinese as well, to invest into the country. And I see a lot of interest. This, this is the way forward. Um, uh, I think uh, what we have moved in the agriculture, which I mentioned very well now, we are almost reaching, uh, like uh, probably in, in wheat, we are very nearing to having uh, uh, like self-produced in, in the country. We're encouraging the farmers, this creates jobs. We are not encouraging farmers to move into the cities. We have to give them incentives to stay in their farms, to increase uh, their activities and uh, uh, this is the goal. We're working on it. Uh, I think I have this, uh, I mean, I've uh, spoke about this, uh, our initiative for the whole region, including the Arab region and our neighbors who are Turkey and Iran. This is built around uh, having uh, po economical development rather than uh, like conflict. To work together, I mean, uh, uh, I have to say, the Syrian war was completely unnecessary. The unfortunate thing, every country, they looked at their sole interest with no regard to the interests of others. This has created over 10 million displaced Syrian people. It has created about three million of those, less, less now because a lot of our displaced people have went back in Iraq. That was, I mean, I don't think leaders can sleep at night in the region while they have created this mess. We have to work together to resolve this mess. mess. And I intend to do this. I intend to work with all the region, with everyone. I don't want to create another problem in Libya. If what we have done, if the terrorists have escaped from here and created another haven for them in Libya or in Egypt or anywhere else, we have to work together to prevent this. Some countries will say, oh, it's got nothing to do with me, but it has. We have here in Iraq, you have seen Daesh 
rolled across the border from Syria to Iraq. And look what they've done. They can do the same thing in other countries. We want to prevent this by our cooperation. We have bilateral relationship with Turkey. I want to encourage trade, economic relationship, security as well, because we have borders. I know they're very unhappy about what's happening in Syria. I'm not happy as well, but probably for different reasons. That's why we have to cooperate in this regard. I know they felt uh, very angry by the referendum which have uh, taken place in our Kurdistan uh, because they considered it as their national security threat to them because they have a sizable Kurdish population as well. Uh, I don't intend to cooperate with any country against my own people, but I intend to cooperate to produce a security status for all of us. Uh, uh, I think they have their grievances regarding uh, uh, other terrorist groups which they consider like the PKK and others. Our intention is not to uh, allow the PKK to wage attacks on Turkey from Iraq. This is our publicized position. This is our my con uh, constitutional uh, uh, duty uh, not to allow any group to wage uh, attack on neighboring countries. And I'm abiding by this. Uh, uh, we are not waging a war against others uh, on account of others, I, by proxy, we should not encourage this. And that is, I mean, the message to Turkey is we are open to all trade. We have to build a new relationship. This relationship has been dented in the past. Uh, in actual fact, what happened in the KRG, in the Kurdish area, is sometimes is, again, the making with our own neighbors. They have encouraged this trend. They wanted to move our Iraqi kids away from Baghdad. It has backfired. I think if we want to build a good relationship, we should deal with our people properly and with our political systems on, on, the, on the right track. That is my message to them. I know they're very eager for us to meet. I hope to build a new relationship with Turkey, built on today rather than yesterday.